Today, we're gonna shoot X-Pan on digital, the exact same crop format. We're gonna get that same look as much as possible. We're gonna shoot some X-Pan. X-Pan's an iconic true panoramic film camera, but to get one, expect to pay five to 10,000 US dollars. Everything you see today was shot on digital. They're kind of hard to share on social media, but when you print them, it's amazing. You're gonna see just how easy it can be and how it will really push you creatively. The truth is, when I did this experiment, I was shocked how by forcing myself to shoot in an XPAM panoramic format, it really helped me see differently. And that's why it's better to do what I'm gonna show you today and we're gonna mark it out and then we're gonna go shooting. Now, the truth is you can shoot any camera like an XPAN. You just have to crop that sensor. Kidding, that's not how we do it. I'll show you how we do it. You can use a Sharpie. Obviously, you want a screen protector on for this. A glass screen protector you want to clean with rubbing alcohol. Since I have a glass one, I'm going to use this paint marker. Go right there. There it is, right there. For the next week, or maybe two, maybe three, I'm going to shoot in X-Pan wide form. And I've drawn the lines of the crop that I am committing to on the back of the camera. Now here's the deal. I recognize that if we're shooting raw anyhow, we have the full frame, right? And I could take these and crop them afterwards, but by blocking out a line and committing myself, the test here, the idea here, because I've studied crop and frame and position and line and tone for a lot of years. I've talked about it in my photographics, my photo perfect series. But here's my idea is taking my, my street camera, right? And going out and saying, no, it's not enough just to say I'm gonna crop it later to the way I like it. I'm going to force myself into this format and see what it does for my creativity. X-Pan panoramas work beautifully in pretty much any situation as long as you shoot for it. And this is the key. They work beautifully on portraits, on streets, on landscapes, on product photography. There's so many variables. They work great in verticals, though those are a little harder for me to showcase. One thing you'll quickly find is sure, you can go and find images that are conducive to this, but when you shoot for an X-Pan crop in camera, your whole concept of the image changes and everything is built around that. X-Pan crops can take scenes and scenarios that might otherwise be a little boring and make them really dynamic. You can crop any photo this way, but you can see that on the ones that I actually shot with my mask lines, they're perfectly centered. So I actually just need to do that 65 by 24 crop or 6.5 by 2.4, just adding a decimal point in the custom crop settings. The beauty is that once you have this in there, it will give you that crop in the correct direction, whether it's horizontal or vertical. Now, sure, I can move this around, but I don't actually need to because I framed this in camera. So I could actually copy my crop to all the images and look what I mean. We have this here. I'm still shooting that full raw file, but all I have to do now is paste my crop settings and it's going to center them and they're going to come out exactly as I framed them. I've gone in and I've edited all of these that you're seeing today with my Filmus 2 pack. Of course, you can edit these however you want, but I do really like the way it comes out. If I put a Portra, a Provia, a Kodachrome, because I'm getting this authentic 35 millimeter film look because I'm actually shooting that in real life to make these looks and I'm applying it to a crop format inspired by that X-Pan film look. You get a perspective. You see the richness of shadow. Because you have that narrowed down frame, you cut off a lot of the stuff that normally is a distraction in a photo. So you can really focus on the depth. Goes back to what I'm always teaching in my Shadow Hackers workshops. This comes back to the principles of space and line and tone. I'm a guy who makes presets and tools and things like that. But you know if you follow my channel or come to my workshops, I'm always emphasizing what we can do in camera. Doing X-Pan crops is not simply coming in 
and cropping all your photos. You will start doing that more once you start using these wide crops because you'll find images they work on. But shooting with X-Pan crops is about that little commitment of putting those lines on there and going out and shooting. It'll change the way you see lines leading and you'll start using that composition and that shadow to create these really dramatic frames. Why? Because you're stepping outside of a norm. You're not in a rut. It makes you see things differently. They all have this kind of expansive dynamicness, whether we're looking at the horizontals or whether we're coming in with verticals. Both are very strong. They exude confidence because you have to do them right. There's no really fudging these crops. If you're not planning for it, stuff won't fit in the frame. You won't be able to crop for that. But if you are planning for it, you'll get these dynamic, beautiful compositions that resonate, even though cropping is easy and printing panoramic photos is relatively easy in today's digital world. Most people still aren't doing it because it requires distinctive thought. Okay, I've been through different variables. I've, I've had it completely blocked out. I've put tape on it, I put lines. All of them work. It just depends on kind of what feels good to you. After over a month of having my, my street camera, my X100, which is a 35 equivalent, this way I can say that it really helps you see. It helps you understand better that space and position and line. And then you combine that with the shadow, the tone that I'm always talking about in my Shadow Hackers workshops, put a link to those in the description. It really gives gives you this creative boost and it doesn't matter what camera you're shooting. I like the fixed lens because it forces me to like perspective and position and really think about how I'm using that crop. But you can use this however you want. You're getting the authentic correct crop for that X-Pan. See, I shoot a lot of film, right? I'm, I'm shooting film, I'm editing, I'm making the film is pack. And you might say, oh, well, you're losing a lot of the frame. Sure, but your width is the same. I, I got 24 megapixels on this. I could easily print it like 40. You could go to one of the large format cameras, to the big Sony full frames, to the 40 me megapixel Fuji. Like there's a lot of ways you could do this. And the sky's the limit to your print size. You would have nothing to worry about. All the cameras should allow us to do a custom crop and, and not have to draw lines on the screen. But as long as you put in a screen protector you can just draw lines do whatever you want on the screen because you can you can always just replace the screen protector the main thing is that you're interacting i can still hold up in the viewfinder in the live view i'm still getting the full frame so if i block out the histogram or something like that it, it's still in here but when you're in pano mode when you're using this as kind of your guide it changes the way you think and the way you see, and you have to go try it. After shooting this way, do you need the lines all the time to shoot this way? No, but I've noticed after taking the lines off that I kind of go back to my ruts. So I think not only is panoramic a neat format for the way we see the world, for our eyes, for putting on walls, I think a lot of what happens is ordinary things we see differently when we change the format in which we see. Panoramics, I think, should be printed large, but just for fun little prints, I can cut a 13 by 19 and a half and get two out of it. In the end, the X-Pan for digital was a resounding success. Honestly, I don't know why this isn't done more because even if your camera doesn't have it built in, it's so easy to do and it's gonna open up things in really fun ways for you, whether you're shooting portraits or landscapes or street or whatever you do, it's gonna make you think see and create differently. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you wanna see like more field videos, more getting out and getting hands on, let me know. Hit that like, subscribe, and bell icon. And maybe one day I'll get my hands on the X-Pan or the Fuji version, because it actually wasn't designed by Hasselblad, it was designed by Fuji. I would love to play with one, but this is such a practical way to do X-Pan panoramic crops, and you're gonna love it. All right guys, peace. We'll see you on the next time. It's not a real X-Pan, but it's the X-Pan crop. 24 by 64, 67 or something like that. Da 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 da.